The big question is, what is the fuel of the future? Is it hydrogen, methanol, biofuel, or perhaps the currently trendy, synthetic fuel? Upon analysis, we will determine which one is the best fit for our future. Energy is the second biggest challenge that humans are facing, right after food. For years, people have been trying to find the perfect fuel that is easy to obtain and provides a good source of energy. But there is one aspect of energy development that hasn't kept pace with the technological race and is lagging behind. Energy storage. This is the biggest challenge faced by the energy industry. We can transfer energy over large distances using power lines, but what about transportation or the car industry? This is the challenge at the center of attention. There are two primary methods for storing energy, batteries and fuel. Let's start by examining the most common method of energy storage, the battery. Electric vehicles with batteries were introduced around the same time as gas cars. However, energy storage has been a major obstacle for most applications. Even today, while EVs can travel long distances on a single charge and are very convenient for many commuters who can charge them in a parking lot while working, some people find them impractical if a single charge is not enough to drive through the day. New battery technologies, such as solid-state technology, are currently under development, which promise to revolutionize the electric vehicle industry. It will enable ultra-fast charging in a matter of minutes and significantly extending the distance traveled on a single charge. However, until these technologies become commercially available, we need to continue exploring alternative solutions to address the challenge of energy storage. It's important to keep in mind that batteries are currently the most efficient energy storage technology available. This is because they consume only a small amount of energy during both charging and discharging, while fuels require several additional stages of processing before they can be used as an energy storage medium, and each of these stages consumes additional energy, which reduces overall efficiency. Scientists have been exploring alternative energy storage methods for the automobile industry to address the issue of charging time for EV batteries. Currently, hydrogen and methanol are two promising fuels at the forefront of this effort with the potential to effectively solve the problem. Both hydrogen and methanol can be converted into energy by fuel cells in a fuel cell car, which is essentially an electric car with a smaller battery that is charged on the go. One significant advantage of fuel cell cars over electric vehicles is that they can be refueled in a similar amount of time as traditional gasoline cars. Hydrogen has long been considered a potential solution to many of our energy problems. It is a highly versatile fuel that can be used in a wide range of applications, from powering cars and trucks to heating homes and generating electricity. Hydrogen is also abundant and produces no harmful emissions when burned, making it an appealing alternative to fossil fuels. Hydrogen has emerged as a highly popular alternative to fossil fuels, with numerous hydrogen refueling stations being constructed in various countries. Japan leads the way in this field, with fuel cell technology rapidly advancing. Toyota has taken the lead in fuel cell technology, prioritizing it over the EV sector. Hydrogen fuel cell cars have been in development for several decades and have received significant research and investment from governments and industry. This has allowed for the development of a supply chain for hydrogen production, storage, and distribution, as well as the establishment of hydrogen filling stations in some countries. Additionally, advancements in hydrogen fuel cell technology have made them more efficient and cost-effective over time. Methanol fuel cells, on the other hand, are a relatively new technology and have not received the same level of attention or investment as hydrogen fuel cells. While methanol fuel cells have been used in other applications, such as portable electronics or power generators, they have not yet been widely adopted for use in vehicles. There are several significant challenges that must be addressed before either of them can become a mainstream energy source. The first and most fundamental challenge for hydrogen is the energy required for production. While it is possible to extract hydrogen from water using electrolysis, this process is highly energy intensive and currently too expensive to be a practical solution. 
most of the hydrogen produced today comes from natural gas, which is converted into hydrogen through a chemical process known as steam methane reforming. Another significant challenge with hydrogen is its storage and transportation. Due to being a highly reactive gas, hydrogen can be difficult to store and transport safely. The process of compressing and liquefying it requires significant energy inputs and infrastructure investments. Furthermore, compared to other fuels, hydrogen has a very low energy density, meaning that it takes up a lot of space and is less efficient to transport and store. Hydrogen fuel cells are generally more efficient than methanol fuel cells, resulting in better performance and lower fuel consumption. However, methanol has a higher energy density than hydrogen, meaning it contains more energy per unit volume or mass. This can be an advantage in applications where space or weight is limited, such as in portable devices. Methanol also requires a specific type of infrastructure for fuel storage and distribution. As a liquid fuel, it requires specialized tanks and pumps for storage and transportation. Additionally, methanol is toxic, flammable, and corrosive, which means that special infrastructure is needed to handle it safely. Overall, the development and adoption of fuel cell vehicles is a complex and multifaceted issue, influenced by a range of technological, economic, and social factors. While hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are currently more prevalent, methanol fuel cell vehicles may become more viable in the future as technology advances and infrastructure develops. Now, let's look at fuels that have been developed with the hope of prolonging the life of the combustion engine. Let's start with biofuel. Although biofuel is considered an alternative to fossil fuels, its current stage can only be characterized as evolving with the potential for benefits. For example, Renault's experiment in France broke the record by driving 2,000 kilometers on a single fill-up using GH3 fuel. At this point, it is uncertain whether biofuel can be considered a practical alternative. This brings us to another fuel that claims to be a carbon-neutral alternative to fossil fuels. Synthetic fuel. Synthetic fuel is an alternative fuel that is produced using renewable energy sources and a process known as power-to-liquid or PTL. This process involves converting carbon dioxide and water into a liquid fuel that can be used to power vehicles and machinery. The production process for synthetic fuel involves utilizing renewable energy sources such as solar or wind power to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is subsequently combined with carbon dioxide that has been captured from air and through a fischer tropsk synthesis process is converted into a liquid fuel. The resulting synthetic fuel is compatible with existing infrastructure and can be used in conventional engines, making it an appealing alternative to traditional fossil fuels. Porsche has been at the forefront of synthetic fuel development. The company has stated that it believes synthetic fuels have the potential to play an important role in reducing carbon emissions from transportation. However, there are also some challenges associated with synthetic fuel production. One of the main challenges is very expensive production process. At this point, synthetic fuel cost is five times of the fossil fuels. Another challenge is scaling up production. Although Porsche's Chile facility will have a capacity of up to 55 million liters of e-fuel per year, this is still a relatively small amount when compared to global demand for fuel. Considering those facts, Porsche's decision to produce e-fuel is a smart approach to prepare for the transition away from fossil fuels by 2035 in the automotive sector. The innovative synthetic fuel can act as a viable substitute for gasoline for the millions of Porsches that will still be on the road after that period. Porsche's goal is not to rescue the entire automobile industry, but rather to guarantee that their customers will still be able to drive their vehicles for many years beyond the 2035 ban. According to Dr. Frank Walliser, Porsche's VP of Motorsport and GT Cars, synthetic fuels can potentially reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 85%. However, electric, hydrogen, and methanol fuel cell cars do not emit any carbon dioxide during operation. The carbon dioxide is generated during battery and energy production in rural areas. 
Additionally, energy production will eventually reach zero carbon dioxide emissions in the future, which will bring hydrogen production to zero carbon dioxide emissions as well. Synthetic fuel, on the other hand, removes carbon dioxide from the air in South America during production and later releases it in American cities. Another important fact is that carbon dioxide is not harmful to humans, and the real concern is other combustion pollutants. A graph comparing gasoline to synthetic fuel, based on a study by the Green Group Transport and Environment, reveals that synthetic fuels emit the same amount of pollutants during the combustion process as standard gasoline but cost five times as much. This is an expensive solution that only addresses the 2035 ban on fossil fuels. It is certain that electric, hydrogen, and methanol are the only true future technologies, with electric being the superior option, especially with the anticipated development of a new fast-charging, long-range battery. However, until then, fuel cell hydrogen and methanol will be the best alternative technologies. The development of fusion power generation will bring a new era of green and limitless energy, making EVs zero-emission vehicles and also benefiting hydrogen. Green hydrogen can be produced through electrolysis, which becomes more economical with fusion power generation. Please comment below what you think about future fuels and which one you think is most promising.